performers. Um, and what we do is we bring in engaging drama and drama strategies into classrooms, into prisons, into homes, into shelters, into different venues. We work with parents, we work with three-year-olds. Um, and what we do is we hope to engage other community in dialogue. Um, so we're really excited to be working again with UICD um, under this particular grant, the Neighborhood De uh, Development Area Grant, and we are working specifically in Bronxdale, at Bronxdale High School. And actually, we were lucky enough when we heard about this presentation, uh, Ayana and Ashley's calendars were open, um, <laughs> and we were lucky enough to have them come and join us because they are actually the two teaching artists, or what we refer to as actor teachers, um, who are working within Bronxdale. Um, Ashley actually was also there last year, um, and so we're really super excited. So just a brief intro of what we're gonna give you, uh, introduce to you today, is we're gonna give you a glimpse, a little taste of some of the activities, the kinds of things that we do in the classroom, specifically in our high school classroom with this grant. And this grant is specifically focusing on supporting uh, academic and social literacy, college readiness, and work readiness, with um, the high school community at Bronxdale. And so the teaching artists that we work with, we work at a total of eight schools, working with middle school and um, high school. I have the honor and privilege to be their program director, and I get to hang out with these really creative people um, who are putting their work out there and engaging young people across New York. And um, so anyhow, so they're going to come and show us a little glimpse of what the classroom is like. I'm going to ask you to participate if you are if they engage you to participate to participate as yourselves. Please don't pretend to be a high school student. Um, <laughs> Darn. Um, we, we, we want we we're asking that you participate as yourself. Um, and um, again, it's just a little taste, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the activities that might happen. Um, you know, after that. Yes, sir. Is is neighborhood development? Distinct from all the out of school time programs? Um, um, all right. Did you Mr. want to answer that question? Mr. So basically, the neighborhood development area, as a, as a board, you guys only chose educational high school support, dual services. So that's the only um, area that they have that grant. Now, if you look at that chart, however, research on foundation security, they do have other grants for a campus, which is named out of school time. That's the old name for it, but now it's called Compass and Sonic. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of that. We do. Uh, we get funding from Adolescent Literacy. Okay. So. Now, I don't know if you guys want to touch a little bit on what you guys do with them. We can, well. I can, afterwards, if you do the Q&A, okay. um, I can provide you with other information of other services that we would love to be able to Perfect. provide uh, the community here. Perfect. Okay. So we'll hold up to any questions yeah, for the Q&A. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, with that said, all right, so um, like Kat said, we're going to give you a glimpse of what we're doing in the classroom. Uh, we're really excited to go into Bronxville. We've observed so far and we're implementing for the first time Monday. However, we have another school, and with that school, we started um, working on just getting to know them. We've been there two weeks now, just once a week, uh, getting to know them and really working on identity. So we're just going to keep following on with that. Okay. Ashley, you want to add anything else? Or? Um, yeah, we'll talk about I that. Think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, awesome. So those activities we are set. All right, and we have a certain way of starting with like, our dramas. All right, and we need your help. So when I say go, you're gonna give us a one, two, three action. Just one, two, three action with nice enthusiasm and energy, okay? So let's do a practice round. And go. One, two, two three, three, action. action. Ooh, yes, and I, I love this speeder, right? So I think we got it. Nice flow, all together. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna set myself up, perfecto. And go. One, one two, two, three, three action. action. Electric baby, you're a star. 
when your self-identity, isn't that important to you? You don't want to know your birth parents and where you come from and everything. I'm figuring out. I'm figuring all that out, who I am and, and where I come from. And yeah, sometimes I do wonder about my birth parents. Like, who are they? What are they doing? Are they still alive? Um, which one was black? Which one was Puerto Rican? Uh, Wait a minute. You Latino too? And freeze. <laughs> so yeah, basically, uh, we did present this today. We have to say, I gotta say, we do work in another school uh, in Queens, and so we did do this workshop uh, there. And they were also talking about self identity and, and topics like that. So basically, the way I'll uh, just to give you a, before we go into like a little bit of the processing, just some of the extension activities that we did with this. We started off with an activity called the story of your name. So we paired the students together and they basically shared you know, how they got their names. And so that was a very rich discussion based on what we did um, at the other school in, in Queens. Also, then after that, we also put on the wall, we called it a graffiti wall, and we put self-identity on the wall. We had the kids just, Brainstorm words that came up to them. What, what, what? How? And basically, to see how they um, identified with self-identity. Instead of just giving them a definition for self-identity, we wanted to see where they were and what things that came up for them. Also, to bring in a literacy component, we also put a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson: uh, "To believe your own thought, to believe what is true for you in your private heart, is true for all men." That is genius. And we had them figure out what is Emerson advocating in the quote, uh, and then also think about, give an example from their own life in which you followed but did not follow Emerson's advice. And then after that, we unpack that and process that and ask the more follow-up questions um, from the students. And then also, then after that, we also did an activity called, um, we gave them basically like a t-shirt, a blank t-shirt design. And so basically, taking the conversation about how they identified self-identity and all the things that came up. We wanted to figure out what are the things that resonate for them and how they define their self-identity, whether it be words, images, and put it on the t-shirt. And then we brought, the, take them all up on the wall, and we had the students do a gallery walk to observe the different t-shirts and the different things that came up, what they had in common, and what their differences, and stuff like that. And then this drama that you just saw uh, came at the end. Um, now for Bronzedale, it will be a different setup. We're gonna do some pretty much the same things, but we also have this, when we're doing Bronzedale, that this lesson will be, the drama that you saw will be at the top of the lesson. And then Ayana, I'll let Ayana explain some of the other activities we're gonna do after this. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, it'll be at the top of the workshop, us presenting this drama. Um, we'll take time to process, asking questions about what things were present, what characters did you see, um, you know, kind of really describing the characters and their relationship, and, you know, asking them to hold on to that and connecting it to identity. Uh, these two characters, Wes and Zoe, we're planning to use them a couple of times in the future, <laughs> you know, under different situations, so, you know, it's really allowing them to meet these characters. Um, but yeah, following that, uh, what? The sorry. First identity chart. First part, yes. <laughs> the first part, identity chart, which we actually, you know, have samples of the worksheets that we're going to use and we definitely pass around after just talking about it a little bit. Uh, which, you know, our first personal identity chart really just helps them explore physical identity, family identity, social identity. So I'll just start passing around because, you know, it's just kind of for them to brainstorm this stuff out on paper, you know, using their writing skills, transferring their thoughts to paper. And then they're going to have a personal character component wheel, which they choose the traits that they want to share, the, their favorite traits, you know, so it's really them just kind of like dissecting what they really feel is special about them, or like I said, what they're comfortable sharing. Okay. So now I guess we'll go backtrack a little bit, or maybe process this oh, drama right. a little it's bit. So I'm going to ask you, what things did you see in the drama? Any themes? Energy. Enormous energy. Energy? And, and I'm wondering what age group you're, you're dramatizing to. 
high school. Was it high school? High school. High school. One eight fourteen. Yeah, ninth grade. Ninth grade. Ninth grade. So that would be like sophomore. Fourteen. 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 Those freshmen to seniors. Don't you think? Aren't some of them overwhelmed by what you're doing? I mean, you're constantly active. Mm -hmm. And your energy is electric. And for 14 year olds, it could be overwhelming. Uh, well, I guess based on my experience and based on what like I think before. we use that, I mean, kids, I mean, high school kids are energetic, energetic. And so we have to reach them where they where they are. I mean, the problem, this work, that's why theater is so powerful, to get them to critical think about some of these issues that they are dealing with. And they specifically, in terms of Bronzedale, I mean, this week we observed a lesson, and they were in talk, and last week we were talking about self-identity, so this little, our lesson will kind of jive into what the teacher in their regular class periods is talk, are talking about. And so, like I said, back this week, uh, the teacher was talking about stereotypes and um, and impacting that with, in, the, in, in the classroom. And so they had a, she had them read an article, and they uh, were asking them different questions about uh, is it unfair to judge people based on stereotypes? At which point are stereotypes true? Do we conform to stereotypes, or do we act against them? Um, so I think it could be a very, uh, theater could be a conversation starter to get them to critical think about these things. I mean, it's always interesting to have kids. Because even, I mean, just based on my experience, at Bronx at Renaissance at another school, but there are a lot of kids who do not like to read, and they will actually tell you, I don't like to read. And so by dramatizing things, uh, it lets them, because they like, you know, it's another way of learning. Um, not everyone likes to just <laughs> stay it and, and read, and so I think it's a way to activate the learning. And so uh, a way we would do that, I mean, the theater is a living text. And so uh, going back, if I can go back a little bit, that's what I was saying, what themes we would, in the classroom, after this drama, we would impact it. And we would ask the kids, what themes did you see in the drama? Mm -hmm. So again, I'm going to ask you, the audience, what themes did you see in the drama? Well, it seems like how do we self-identify in an age of uh, multiracial uh, ethnicity? So we have stereotypes that are kind of outdated in relation to the, you know, the actuality of what we experience in the world, especially now in the Bronx. So, okay. And that's some kind of trend that's just going to be continuing past our lifetimes. The, the different types of parenting that are going on now and, and the religious aspects of things too, because what religion are you is a very big focal point in society now too. And children, I think, are impacted greatly. Yeah, religion, parenting, discuss it. I would say about uh, diet, food, nutrition. Diet, food, food nutrition. Any other, any other themes? It's obviously, sexual orientation, especially the um, gay parents. Sexual orientation. What oh. about, I'm um, oh, sorry. Mm, no, that's okay. Mm, okay. No, I was talking about values. You kept you kept emphasizing what did your parents instill in you? And for many children today, because we do live in different families, um, it's depending your heart your your home is where your heart is. Mm -hmm. So that means whatever values you learn is how do you become a good person? How do you make right decisions? How do you deal with some of the social issues that are happening that challenge them? So those values play you know a very critical part in their growth. Mm -hmm. And also. Big issue now is bullying in mm -hmm. schools, and like this is a topic that can be very easily touched on mm -hmm. by bullies. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the aspects that we're looking at. So we got bullying, we got self identity, we got nutrition, religion, sexuality, values. values. A lot of these kids, right? A lot of, of, a yeah. lot of in, in, in just a few in a mini scene, and so we would mm -hmm. impact that and also go deeper. You responded to everything that she did, and like you were acutely focused on her. Um, and you made it possible for her to open up. And it, she was opening up, and she was divulging the most sensitive areas of her personality. And without um, small singer. You were making it, adding it to a dialogue. 
And you, you ended on, I can't breathe. Okay. You got it in some books. But it was open-ended because the way the two of you were going, there was really no end to it. And, and just to piggyback on a lot of our dramas, many dramas, we don't necessarily, most of them we don't present them with a neat and tidy it, it, it is to keep the conversation going and to keep raising questions. Um, so we don't want to present it with, oh, this is how the story will end. Because like I said, this is only a uh, set where we'll see these characters again and we'll follow the story and present other themes and see these characters in other situations. And so you never want to just leave it with just a little bit of nice tidy ending. Yeah, yeah, and just to add on, like really like the basis for the creative arts team for a long time is problem solving skills. So a lot of the times when many dramas are presented, it should be done at like a climax or just kind of like at an area which allows the students to uh, make inferences, to you know use the knowledge from the drama presented to them and also just their own knowledge that they come in with. Combining that together to create predictions for the characters, you know, um, part of the process and questions, you know, if we ask like, you know, if, how would you describe what's in Zoe's relationship, then you could ask, add on a question like, you know, how do you think the relationship is going to change in the future? So, you know, just to add on to what Ash is saying, I think that's like another reason to kind of like leave it very open-ended so it gives like the students a lot of freedom to like, you know, explore what could possibly happen. It also helps us to shape the future yeah, dramas that we come in. Like, so they say so, we're like, hmm, maybe, you know, maybe we will create a drama. And also to go back to that literacy aspect a little bit, I mean, we're not going to go there, but even so, we, will, we did, like, after we do the dreaming drama, we did, you know, process and ask you many questions. And so you guys came up with a lot of good answers about the themes you saw. So again, the follow-up, again, how we use the drama as a text. You know, you said about nutrition, I mean, Kat said about nutrition and that. So we would actually follow up where in the drama, the text, did you see that? How was that communicated? Mm -hmm. So that's how we use the, the drama as the text to get them to have to explain, um, to articulate what they see and not just opinion, but really going, referring back to what they see. So that helps them to improve their literacy skills. And when they do read a book, you know, they see clues and different other um, uh, ways that they can look at, you know, reading literature. It's also a help on our shyness because ninth grade, fifty percent of kids are very shy. Even they know the stuff, they not come out. But if you go by to the drama, yeah, that they know whatever they put into education to shyness break down and they move forward. Because I mean, these topics yeah. are very uncomfortable. You know, to me, they can be uncomfortable. That's yeah. the great thing. You know, sometimes great theater is uncomfortable, so, well, but at the same time, you can address these issues. I have a question. When you introduce these themes, do you get a parental, uh, do you have the parents sign saying that they waive their rights to know what you're teaching their children? Because I would have a problem with that as a parent. Mm -hmm. um, we do at the beginning of, of the class, I mean, at the beginning of our workshop, we do have, not necessarily about the themes necessarily, but we do have them sign a um, permission I, I can speak more yeah. to that if you like. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I want to make sure that you guys are... Okay. are but in the permission slip, you describe okay, the I, themes. I'm, I'm going to answer that okay. question in a second. So I would just like to say thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay, so just because of time, um, I would like to answer to that, which is um, before we go into the classroom, what we do is we observe the young people and we observe them in their communities and we do research within their communities and we also research what the subject they are studying. And what we also do is we come in, before we start introducing any of our dramas, what we do is we actually play a lot of games and activities where in which we start generating ideas and the themes that they are particularly interested in. Right. So this work is actually comes out of the fact that we were working with a group of young people and this was a subject of interest to them. Right. And so while there isn't a permission slip that we, we don't have a permission slip that says like this is the, what we're going to be working on. Um, that is some th these are themes and subjects that are happening in their life. And we feel that if that is something that they want to talk about then that's what we're bringing in. If there's a concern from a parent or a teacher or administration, we welcome those conversations. Um, and I'm more than welcome to have a conversation with you if you'd like about it. Um, but well, I'm just a saying as a, as a parent representative, okay, yeah. a parent can object to anything if they don't know anything about it. That's number one. 
Number two, you said yet you you observe the children the the in their I mean, is that like stalk? Okay, yeah, you observe sorry, them, we'll right? Because that sounds like stalking to me. I'm just saying, you know. What we do is I'm using the language that we have in mm. our brain, which is we go and observe them in their in their respective classrooms whether it's in their ELA class, their, any kind of humanities mm -hmm. class, where in which we are observing them and watching what are the things that they're interested in, what are some of the issues that are mm -hmm. happening, what are the topics, who are the people in the group who are leaders in that community, right? Who are the people in that group who have potential to be leaders in that community? Who are possibly the people who aren't opening up in that group? And what we do is we, we come back there's an entire team of us who come back together and we go, so these are this is these are the things that we've learned about our community. What are the ways in which can we engage them? Mm -hmm. So Well, I just again, I again I I if, I, I guess, as I far as the parents, answer. I understand you that you what you're saying is you're you're getting these ideas ideas from the kids themselves. Mm -hmm. However, we don't, as a, as a parent, again, that needs to be, they are minors. That needs to be left up. The kids have all kinds of ideas and what have you. But they are minors, and to introduce subjects that their parents maybe don't want them to be discussed in school or what, you know, what have you, because you're there to teach them whatever to teach them. You're not there as a school. It's a school, right? We I mean, are, you're not there to you're not there, there to to uh, to to you're not there to um, influence their social uh, influence influence how they might th and change how may, they might see things. They may have different values at home than what you're seeing. That's going to cause confusion between child and parent or child and household. So this is why it's very important to get the parents involved. If a young person comes in and they have completely opposing values of characters that we bring in, we are, we encourage that dialogue. I think you're bringing up some an issue that feels like a bigger issue that you might want to discuss with DYCD, just because in terms of policy and what each school, uh, how each school deals with that kind of material. Because I can't actually speak to that. Mm -hmm. All I know is that what we do is we bring in things that we hope can incite dialogue. We're not coming in to tell young people that they should be or believe a certain way. What we're encouraging to do is have a conversation and be okay with that, being able to be different from each other and to also be able to really, it goes back to literacy. It goes back to being able to read this as text, right? We're trying mm -hmm. to use an engaging way so that they can come to realize that all those literacy skills that are on their exam, that they experience anxiety about, they're actually skills that they're constantly using all the time, right? And this is one of the spaces in which they do that. They do that when they're in their cafeteria, they do that when they're in class in math, and they do it when they're engaging with our story. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I'm open to any other questions that you may have, but I would encourage you to have a, 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 a bigger conversation with uh, DYCD. That's a concern. That's a concern. Okay. I just want to piggyback on that, Kat. Um, the, like all these programs, these after school programs or extracurricular programs, these are not for all students. Now, these are, these are for, you know, from my understanding, these are for students that are interested in, be, in being part of this program. Yes. It's not like you're going to the school and you're telling them you have to come to our program because we have this grant and we need you. So you have to be interested in the program in order to participate. In it. And so I, is this a public school or not a public school? Rockstale, from, from my understanding, is a public school. It's in Columbus High School. Yeah. Right. It's in Columbus, it's in Columbus, right. Columbus. Oh, okay. It's on the Columbus campus. Right. So, and, you know, so, so just um, to finish it up there. So, so in turn, for, for all these programs, that, um, well, in your case, for Educational High School Sport, these programs, you're not having all the kids from Columbus High School or Bronx still, you know, participate in this program. So you have to be interested, and they have to show some type of, you know, it has to go with what they want to see or what they want in, in the in the participant. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I just want you to take that into consideration. It's not like they're coming in there and they're, they're you know they're taking the students out out of the class or after school and saying you know this and this mm -hmm. and there. It has to be you know it has to be a consensus between both student 
themselves and the parents as well because I'm guessing the parents know that their, their, their child is in this after school program mm -hmm. that involves theater. Oh, it's an after school? It's a, it's a or day it's school a... program that is selective. It's not part of their academic uh, class. Um, I, you had your hand raised. Okay. Um, it, it is a non academic class depending on which class the school determines it to be. So, for instance, um, some of our sites, um, we're in this particular grant, we're in five schools, and each school has created a unit for us. So, in some of our schools, um, they've made it kind of uh, an elective uh, class. Another school has made it that it is part of their drama program. And it's a community creative arts team that goes through the school? Yes. And they're funded by the PRC? Yes. Okay, because um, SIMS has a theater program. Mr. Van Voorhis is the, um, he's the um, teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you have any other questions? Um, so our company also runs, like I mentioned earlier, we work with uh, pre-Ks, um, and we also work with adults, we work with parents, we work with teachers, um, and it's not always uh, necessarily a performance-centered. Uh, um, for this particular age group, um, they've entered that age where um, they've gone from participation to observation because so much of that age group is about interacting just with media and being an audience. Um, and so with our, our older high school group, this is what we tend to do. Um, but there are occasions where we put them into what's called enroll. So they would play community members or they would play members of uh, a jury if we were doing kind of some sort of a legal uh, drama. Um, they would play experts of some kind, um, but it'd be more, uh, it'd be kind of this relationship maintains itself until they kind of are okay with it and it unfolds throughout the year. Um, with our middle school, it's a lot more interactive in terms of the young people really at that age are still willing to participate and play, which is really mm -hmm. delightful. Um, and yeah, so, if, yes, sir. Well, we're all you know, adults. We're going back to the ninth grade, the fourth year, that you're active, they were active, and for a 14 year old to understand that they're witnessing to active, mm -hmm. and maybe to see and question them after they've clapped and after they've acknowledged the performance, and then if they respond, to be active mm -hmm. with questions about the character, whatever, that um, the, they've witnessed character development and catharsis, they, they witnessed all the elements of drama in just a few minutes. It's, over, it's overwhelming, it's powerful. But, once they have a chance to see well, she was acting and he was acting, but now they're talking as, as non-actors. They were uh, that kind of dialogue between the students and the actors can be sophisticated. It can also be very subtle. It can also be um, that Hey, the students, I could do that too. You know, improv improvisation. Mm -hmm. So it, it becomes very open ended. And Grace's point does speak to people who, well, it's an enrichment, a support group. So, you know, you take it if you want to take it, you don't take it if it's going to be oppressive. But I, I can see how parents would be enraged or incapable of being open to it. So, um, you know, it, it, if they realize that there was an elective and that their child did not have to take it, if they, as parents, did not uh, approve of their taking it, that'd be very important. Yeah, no, I, I, yes, I completely understand. I mean, I myself don't have a child, but I can only imagine uh, no, you can't. Oh, that would be like, yes. I, I just wanted to say that um, as a parent and a person who has um, been an educator and a counselor for many years, children 
uh, when we just internalize what their family values but are exposed to so much mm -hmm. in terms of the world around them and the changing world around them and different concepts and sometimes have more questions than answers that we sometimes don't bring to their parents or to their churches or even to their teachers. Mm -hmm. Programs such as yours allow the possibility to explore some of the questions and figure out answers. Because although you're educating, you're not teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's great. Which is, which is a difference. You're giving, you're not talking at them. You're allowing them to develop by learning and you're educating, but you're not teaching, which is very different. And at some point along the line, because of parents, there are parents that want to have a stronger voice, you may have to think of some sort of, um, I don't know what I would even call it down the line, because in, in coming into the school, the school is all basically approving the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So I, I see a very difference, and I see it with a great value. Thank you. Um, it, yes, the, the little ones, the preschool crowd, um, what sort of subjects do you broach on? You don't go into like this really serious stuff about I have two mommies yes. and their game. Well, it, um, it, with the little ones, it tends to depend on what um, their particular community wants. Um, so a lot of our younger ones tend to be animal story based, um, and they actually tend to be a lot of bullying. You had mentioned that earlier. So a lot of our younger programs deal with bullying. Um, but even that, again, we go into the community and we do focus groups, and we identify what it is that that, that, that group of young people are interested in and what they are, what they're curious about, um, so that we can meet them where they are. You know, we, we're really big believers that. Um, of meeting people where they are. Um, if you have any other questions, you can go, um, you can contact Mr. Peralta, um, or you can go on our website, which is at, CUNY, at creativeartsteam.org. Org. Um, I would give you brochures, but they are somewhere on the five train in our <laughs> um, Because that's where my life is going. Um, also, just a really just quick anecdote. I, I realize just for the sake of time, but you were mentioning about the engagement of being being engaged by the actors on stage. Um, so I am um, in 1995. Um, the CUNY Creative Creative Arts Team was then at NYU. The Creative Arts Team came to my high school. Um, I was 16 years old. I had never seen actors in front of me before, and they turned around and they started talking to me. And so I thought they were talking to me, but it was not a friend. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, is that I was there and I was completely and utterly engaged and I was talking to this character who was experiencing domestic violence in her relationship. And I was completely wowed by it. Um, I had been with the organization, I've been a teaching artist for 16 years, and I re you know, I've recently taken on this position as program director the last couple of years, um, because I really believe that that moment of engagement I had as a young person when I was 16 years old, transformed me as a person. And so I truly, truly believe in the work that drama can incite change. I, I, you, you wouldn't, you couldn't tell, but like at 16 years old, I was like a sweet little delinquent, just looking for so much trouble. <laughs> and I just thought that I just thought that no one could understand me. Um, and I really, I, I hooked onto this organization, and I joined the different programs that they had. And eventually, I started becoming interested in doing this work. Um, so if, if you take nothing with you, um, if you take that piece of story, I mean, the idea isn't for your young people to end up doing this work, but it's the idea that your young person is inspired in some capacity to change the narrative um, that they are living. So, uh, Sorry. Yes. No, it's not really a question. Um, I had them come from my um, meeting. Are you familiar with family life too? Um, I've heard of them, but I don't know anyone from them. They're similar. They do, um, one of the things they do is, um, uh, uh, they work with DOT and doing, uh, Vision Zero presentations on, like, you know, choices and other things like that. Mm -hmm. It's very similar. They came to the NS-135 campus to Bond Street, you know, for their presentation. It is very, very, very engaging and very, Yeah, very, I have very to say impactful. that I had nightmares because I was back and forth with 
Yeah. Like a matter of opinion. <laughs> no, because the way that they presented it, I felt bad for the, the people that were in the, that, you well, know. Well, they were actors. Yeah, they were saying, you know, the, right, the but, characters yeah. that they portrayed, but they, I felt bad for them. But they only have to leave this like that they killed somebody. And it's, but <laughs> they don't tell you they're actors. And they yeah, do their they thing. Are, and, are, right. They don't tell you till after. <laughs> so you think that it's real. It's yeah. wish people to go to jail. It's wrong to wish people that but they kill the kid. You know, oh, she says it was my point. <laughs> 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 I'm glad you told you eventually, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was so upset and I was so pissed off because I didn't realize that they were I don't think yeah, that, can, that can be very that can be very startling. It's, it's shock theater. That's what that is. It was very, very shocking. I, they were really good. I, I really appreciated it. And then the other thing I have to say, if this had been around when my son was going to the clubs, he would have loved it. This way, he would have really, really gotten into it. Um, is, do, is there any other anything else? If there aren't any other questions, I'll hand it over to you. Um, I hope you don't mind. We're going to make our way out. Um, <laughs> going go to the five train? Okay, right now this is going to be the end of this evening's program. And if there are any questions, uh, future questions, you can contact. Um, Gian, and he will answer any questions you all may have. I have some cookies in the back and a few bottles of water left, so if anyone would like to have yeah. anything before they go, take some with you if you don't want to eat now. Okay, so and we thank you very much for coming out this evening, and we look forward to seeing you again. This is the largest crowd we've had. It's the only crowd we've had. It's the only crowd we've had. <laughs> Also, if you have any questions about becoming a, a, a neighborhood advisory board member, I believe there's three seats open. Well, uh, another thing I want to say is uh, the members can meet around this for a few minutes.